it's nice to uh, meet everyone. I'm Adeline Vandiver. I am a child neurologist at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I'm one of the PIs of the Global Loop Dystrophy Initiative, or GLIA, a consortium that is funded by the RDCRM. Loop yeah. dystrophies are a series of uh, inheritable disorders that affect the glial axonal unit, uh, or more commonly known as the part of the brain and the cells that make the myelin sheath and that help transmit information between the nerve cells and the rest of the body. If you think about what myelin sheath is, uh, the myelin sheath is much like the insulation around your electrical wires and the appliances in your house or your cell phone and helps to conduct information efficiently through the brain and to responses outside the body. Leukodystrophies are disorders that are genetic, that are caused by genes that cause problems with different proteins or messaging within the cell and therefore cause problems with this maintenance or stability or function of the myelin sheath. Pat patients with leukodystrophies have therefore problems with communicating, with movement, and uh, even with basic functions such as eating and breathing. Some patients can be very mildly affected and be even typical until uh, adulthood. So some of these disorders present in adulthood. And then some of these disorders are much more uh, devastating with early onset, even in little babies, um, with sort of everything in between. That there are you know, more than probably 50 different disorders that are classically considered leukodystrophies, and then many dozens more that have an impact on those cells that uh, form the myelin sheath. So this is a very heterogeneous um, population of disorders. We in the glia CTN, we chose to focus our efforts on certain disorders because of a couple of features. One, um, these were disorders where we thought there would be sufficient numbers of patients that we could effectively do uh, the work. Some of these loop tissues are very recently diagnosed and have very small numbers of patients, and you might not be able to yet until more patients are identified do uh, uh, work on those disorders. And also, we chose disorders where there was either existing or imminent right, uh, clinical trials, because we figured that was where the greatest need was and where the greatest impact of our work uh, could be felt. And then the last thing is that we picked disorders that were examples across the lifespan impact of those leukodystrophies, figuring that if we you know, learned how to measure outcomes in little babies in AGS, or learned how to measure outcomes and biomarkers in childhood onset disorders like um, Alexander disease, or learned how to, to perform outcomes in adults with a primary myelopathy like adrenal myel myelineuropathy, right? We would then be able to template those experiences in how to, to measure outcomes in other more rare disorders where we wouldn't be able to have that learning curve, but we could just apply learned knowledge.